Hi! This was going to be a mail call video, but we had some kind of recording problem with the audio and it was pretty much unlistenable and I can't put you through that because it was really, really, really awful. So, we can't, I can't really recreate opening everything up because everything's already been opened up. So, we're just going to do, uh, we'll call it a mail call review and we'll talk about what I got even though it's already op all opened up. First, we have a Music & Sound MC302. This came from a fella in Las Vegas. I contacted him because I was contacted by a customer or a potential customer who has an MC302. He lives in Canada. In an attempt by, I think, an electrician to install one of these Wi-Fi door cameras, somebody spliced something to do with the transformer and that was a bad idea and something in the master station blew up and the master station went dead. So did the camera, probably. So he contacted me to see if I would be able to work on it. And I told him, well, I could, maybe, but I didn't have any MC302s. While he was figuring out what he was gonna do, I figure it's time to find a couple. So I called somebody that I knew and they said, yeah, I've got this one, the fellow in Las Vegas. He said, I'll send it to you. And I said, that would be great. Potential problem for the fella in Canada is, and if we can get this cover off, I'll show you. These are kind of tricky because on these models, the speaker cone for the master is attached to the back of the grill. That makes it a little tricky to take off. On models like these, and most mid-90s and later models. Here we have the display board. It's got all the buttons on it. And right down in here, where it's really, really hard to see, you might be able to see the little shiny legs of it. This is a microprocessor. And the microprocessor is responsible for making the system operate the way it does. If you hook it up wrong and you blow it up, say you're trying to hook up one of those Wi-Fi camera things and somebody splices the wires wrong and everything goes poof, if you kill the microprocessor, you're kind of toast because it's not a replaceable part because it has to be programmed with the code or the firmware that makes it operate in an MC302. That's not something that an individual can do. I can't do that because I don't have the source code or any of that. The only way you can fix a set like that is to have a donor unit. Donor is a polite term for a used unit, which you can rob a board out of and put it in the customer's set and make it work again. So this was a good find. And I appreciate Paul getting this to me. It's got a clear thing. There we go. It's kind of discolored, but it's in pretty good shape. It's definitely a good sort of parts unit or something. He said that he thinks it did work when he took it out. So that's one that was opened up. We'll put that over there. And then if you're a viewer of bail call videos you might remember recently that i got a whole big box of music and sound stuff there was an mc902 and a whole bunch of transformers and chime modules and all that kind of stuff and that came from pat in lincoln nebraska turns out that pat had some more stuff so he sent it to me. We struck a deal. This is an N94, which is another remote station for an MC902 stereo music intercom system. It's missing the volume control for the music connections, but that's not a big deal. That would be an easy thing to make up and fix. And then the other thing that he had was he had an MC302 and he also had another MC302 they don't want to stand up today. Music and sound sets don't stand up well, so we'll just lie them down. And he had another MC302, and believe it or not, he had another MC302 in black. I like the black ones. I think black sets look good. These are in various states of repair or disrepair. This one's missing the knobs. It's missing the speaker cone. It's missing the tuner module here. This one looks to be complete, so that's good. This one, missing a speaker cone. It's 
kind of unusual. You've got two sets that are missing master station speaker cones. I wonder if speaker cones are a problem on these. It's an unusual speaker cone, smaller than other models they made at the same time. So that's kind of interesting. This one does have the tuner. This one's got speaker cone, but it doesn't have a tuner. So that's gone. And then this capacitor, something's going on here. It's kind of squished right there, like somebody grabbed it with a pair of needle nose pliers, and it's kind of pulled out at the bottom. So I think somebody pulled, tried to pull it off the board, or I don't know, did something with it. So that's obviously, looks like that's kind of toast. Not a big deal. It's interesting on these models, especially the ones missing the tuners. All of the sets, all the MCs that they made in the mid-90s through the early 2000s all used the same tuner modules. So... We're sort of building up a supply of those. And it's interesting that these are missing because what that kind of tells me is that Music and Sound traditionally has tuner module problems. That's not a surprise. But what this tells me with this many of them missing is that people were robbing tuners out of other masters to repair customers' sets instead of actually fixing the tuners themselves. And these tuner modules are very repairable. And in fact, I have a video you can watch where I did a tuner module repair on an MC602. So there's that. The other thing Pat sent me, maybe we'll make a little room here, is he sent me this. This is a Music & Sound MC170. This is, again, a entry-level builder model. It's because it's a little limited on features for its day. It's got an analog tuner. Analog means that you turn the knob and the pointer moves back and forth. It's not digital or electronic tuning. It's limited in its capacity. It looks like it can have five remote stations. And apparently, got a little faceplate damage here. Pat said he thought it was from a candle. It looks kind of severe for a candle to me. I'm thinking more like toaster oven and this was sitting behind it and it got hot air blown on it a lot or something like that. The thing that's nice about this one is it's, it's a model that the note says on it, all working 100% needs face, which is true. And then also on the note here on the front, it says this unit works except the chime plug does mute music, but chime doesn't ring through. So this set has a well-defined problem, if this is correct, in that the chime mutes the audio, but it doesn't ring through. Now, I assume because Pat's a professional that he would have tried a replacement chime module. It's not a chime module problem. That'd be my guess. This has a well-defined problem if this is true. That's an ideal set to learn and work on because we can figure out what, where the problem is and solve it. And if it happens on this one, it probably happens on other ones too. That's a very brief mail call review. Sorry, I couldn't open up everything but sometimes that's the way it goes when you record videos. I hope you found this interesting and maybe at some point for someone it will be helpful. I'm sure it will be for the guy in Canada. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.